Hello, my name is Emily Cody. Several of you know that I by no means have a British accent, but whenever anyone sees documentary, it seems the invisible narrator always has a British accent. So, there you are then. Now, the reason why I'm here talking to you is to tell you the story of one of the most important inventions in human history. Mm. Uh, no, not quite. Mm. No, not even that. Mm. Well, that's, that's just plain rude. No, it is most certainly not the giraffe. The most important thing of all human life on this earth is beer. Yes, beer. Don't act so surprised. Beer has done so much for mankind throughout the millennia from causing the discovery of agriculture to developing mathematics. But the question to ask is, how exactly did beer do that? It's just an alcoholic beverage. In which case you would be completely correct. But one thing that you do not count on was hearing the entire history of beer in this short documentary named The Little Big History of Beer. So let's begin with the story of our savior, beer. Let's back up four billion years into the past. Just a bit further, a little more, just a little more, and there, the beginning of life on the planet itself. Most of you know the story, so I'll just skim over this bit. Life began around massive oceanic vents that provided the first prokaryotic cells with chemical and heat energy, helping them to evolve exponentially. About 500 million years later, some of the cells migrated to the surface and evolved even further as to soak up energy from the sun through a process called photosynthesis, which then led to an explosion of life. Prokaryotic cells radically transformed our atmosphere from carbon dioxide rich to quite the opposite, now rather oxygen rich. Being that most of the cells were still prokaryotic and couldn't live off the oxygen, many died off. But, some cells still remained that had developed the ability to use the abundance of oxygen to their advantage. Hence, the first eukaryotic cells that later pulled together to create multicellular organisms. They then became plants and moved up onto land with a multitude of different species. But, the most important plant in human history was adapting and changing. A little grain called barley. And this is where we come in human race, or at least a slightly primitive variation of it. No, not really like that. More like this. About 100,000 years ago, we lived as hunting-gathering societies, where humans would continually move around in small groups in order to survive. One day, about 90,000 years later, a group of gatherers found a small field of barley, picked the grains as they needed for a food source, and placed them in a nearby pot. But, when the group left to hunt for several days, it rained and rained, filling the pot with water in addition to barley. When the hunters returned, they found their soaked barley and tasted the first beer in the history of the world. And they liked what they tasted. After that huge discovery, early humans wanted more of this delicious liquid. They tried to recreate the recipe countless times, and when they ran out of barley in that field, they decided to try and grow their own. So, in a way, Beer ignited the idea for the agriculture that was and is completely vital to the development and survival of the human race. The idea for beer exploded across the world, which clearly sped up the process of collective learning. Early humans wanted to spread their glorious idea as fast as they possibly could, and they succeeded. Not only was beer responsible for the discovery of agriculture, but for the inventions that went with it. The plow, irrigation, wheeled carts, and many more. Yes, wheeled carts. Beer basically invented the wheel. As the years went by, the idea of agriculture spread throughout the world, but as the idea grew, so did the amount of users. The farmer population exploded, as did the need for more field space and ways for keeping track of it. And then there was mathematics, a way to calculate and equalize the area of personal field space. Of course, at first it was just simple equations, but the incredible idea still stands. Beer invented mathematics. Not only did beer invent mathematics, it also invented the item that always goes hand in hand with it, the written language. When land surveys were taken in many civilizations, they were recorded in books and kept by the high governmental powers. The recording led to the first form of writing, which was cuneiform. 
a lovely piece of evidence found in some of the oldest recordings was actually the cuneiform symbol for beer. It looks a little something like this. Beer was so incredibly important, it had its own symbol. Not only was beer completely essential for civilizations in the Fertile Crescent, but also for some African ones as well. Ancient Egypt, for example. A little known fact about the Egyptians was that beer was the most important thing in their lives. Not only was it an amazing source of nutrients, it was also worshipped. The primary god, Ra, was the god of love, life, and beer. One of the most iconic landmarks of the entire globe was built by the Egyptians. Or was it beer? The Great Pyramids, one of the seven great wonders of the world. The workers of the pyramids were employed to work hour after hour. But they weren't paid in money. They were paid in actually beer. Huge surprise there. Exactly one gallon a day. It would have taken over 231 million 414,717 gallons of beer to construct the Pyramid of Giza. Yes, beer was practically used as money in ancient Egypt, but do you know what other qualities it had? Beer was also a main source of nutrients for the common citizen. Back then, oh, about 4,000 years ago, beer had an amazing effect on people. They were happy, strong, healthy, productive, and just a little bit drunk all the time. Beer was known to have amazing health qualities, including curing many diseases, from sickness of the gums to bowel fumigants. Don't ask. Beer was so amazing at the time that when current-day scientists were examining a mummified body, they found traces of tetracycline, a modern-day miracle drug that wasn't originally discovered until 1948. Doctors and scientists around the world were astounded, and when they tried to find answers as to why this had happened, they came across an ancient beer recipe from over 3,000 years ago that contained the potential to produce the effects of the drug. Beer achieved the first antibiotic about 3,000 years in advance. Several hundred years later, beer made its way to medieval Europe where the likeness of living to the age of six years old was only 50%. Life was much shorter than it was in Egypt for many reasons, including warfare, the bubonic plague, and especially the water. Whenever anyone drank the water, they would become sick, which isn't really a surprise, seeing that there was a ridiculous amount of bacteria within it. Sewage was dumped into the water, waste from tanneries, and bits of meat from butcher shops. Talk about unsanitary. Being that the water was so undrinkable, the only other source of liquid was beer, which was basically toxin-free. Everyone drank from beer for their entire life. In the 16th century, people would drink 300 liters of beer a year, which is six times the amount what we drink today. Beer was simply a growing industry, where anyone who brewed would be rich overnight. One group that took advantage of the popularity was actually the church. Monks would call beer an actual godsend after they became so rich. People began going to church more frequently and becoming more religious around that time period because they were promised beer after the service. And so, beer began its journey to America, with the first pilgrims aboard their ships, which was actually a smart idea. Being that water would actually go bad on a long voyage, beer was the logical choice because it would not. Alcohol kept the beer fresh throughout the long voyage, but when the settlers ran out of beer, they were forced to land in Plymouth rather than Virginia. Destiny or beer at work? When the settlers ran out of beer on land, they were completely desperate. That is, until they were inspired by the squirrels. Yes, this sounds strange, but it's completely true. They decided that instead of using barley to brew beer, they would use acorns. This practice is still maintained in some parts of the world today. As the years passed, the founders of our country began to have their hand in beer, so to speak. Some of the most famous and influential of which were brewers. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Samuel Adams. Even Benjamin Franklin said, Beer is proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy. 
As America grew and grew, so did towns and cities, along with the local tavern, the place to tell all the gossip of the town, along with getting information and communicating over large distances. Ideas would spring and come into being from the local bar, including one of the most important victories of our nation. On December 16th, 1773, a group of revolutionaries decided to go to the Green Dragon Tavern of Boston, where the more beer they drank, the quicker the idea transformed into the Boston Tea Party. And so was the American Revolution. During the war, taverns were still considered to be the places of information and good times. Revolutionary activity was discussed and planned in taverns across America, lending to the cause of freedom in any way possible. Previously, I mentioned that beer was used for medical purposes to treat the ill. This is completely true, even for modern medicine. Beer is the basis for modern medicine, if you will, and here's how. In the 1850s, Louis Pasteur discovered the fact that disease was actually caused by our little friends called germs. Before this, no one had any idea what caused diseases at all. When Pasteur began his research, everyone thought that he was trying to find a way to stop milk from spoiling, when, in reality, he was trying to find a way to pasteurize beer. And, no surprise here, he succeeded. But how? Well, Louis Pasteur examined the beer underneath the microscope and found that something was moving. A lot of people like to think that he was really surprised. Who wouldn't be? The beer was alive! Well, so to speak. The bacteria in the beer was alive would be a more accurate statement. After doing a bit more research, Pasteur discovered that the bacteria was what was causing the beer to spoil. He thought about it for a while and thought if bacteria could make beer sick, could bacteria make people sick as well? And thus, modern medicine was born. There was an explosion in medicinal technologies, with vaccines to cure diseases such as smallpox and polio, new surgical methods, and more. The surgical methods were actually the ones that saved the most lives, believe it or not, and not in the way you expect. When doctors across the country and the world began to realize that germs were what made people sick, they began washing their hands. Just by doctors washing their hands before delivering children, they saved millions upon millions of lives from infections and deadly diseases. I'm sure that any teenager's first thought when coming home from school is something along the lines of food. Am I correct? And what is the first thing opened in the house? To find that food? The refrigerator. If anyone knows anything about early refrigeration, then they'll know that it was absolutely horrific. Before current day methods of cooling, ice blocks were bought every week in order to keep food cool. In the 1840s, a new type of beer was invented in Germany, which presented a slight problem. The drink had to be brewed cold. So, along came the scientists and engineers who accomplished in developing the first mass production refrigerating machine in 1881, specifically for the purpose of brewing the new type of beer named lager beer. Now, this completely changed the world forever. Refrigeration helps to manufacture and store new medicines, move donor organs, and make ice cream. Yes, you're welcome world, and hello root beer floats. The Industrial Revolution. Big. Bold. And if your history teacher tells you that factories began with Henry Ford building the motor car, then you may have the pleasure of telling them that they're dead wrong. Ten years before Ford, Michael Owens was at work in 1904 developing an amazing machine that was completely automated to make, what? Beer bottles. And by this amazing invention, the glass bottle industry became completely automated, thus ending child labor in America. The glass industry had for many years been reliant on child labor, but not anymore. That invention ended child labor in six to ten years flat, completely. Beer simply automated America and the world. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mambo number five. Today, America drinks beer, and lots of it. 6.2 billion gallons of it a year, in fact. And beer continues to be the number one choice for adult drinks across the planet. So, of course, scientists are attempting to find a way to take mankind's greatest invention with them to, perhaps, across the stars? In Australia, Jaron Mitchell is working on just that. 
He is trying to develop a beer that will go into space so that even NASA astronauts can enjoy a cold brew. Of course, there have been a few setbacks, like the fact that beer would have to be flat, that is, without any carbonation. With our lovely Earth, there is something we like to call gravity, where it allows gas and liquid to separate in the stomach and allow for a more or less dry belching experience if you're part in the world. But that wouldn't be the case in outer space. The two wouldn't separate, so the gas bubbles would take the beer with them. Not exactly an enjoyable experience, I'm afraid. But all the same, the Space Beer's prototype has been sent into the beyond and has been a success. Surely, the astronauts are pleased. Beer has been with the human race since our beginning and has helped us through the ages build and grow a world that is basically run by beer, which surely was not its original plan. Its footsteps are stamped across history, creating and destroying ideas for the common good. Beer. It will always be with us throughout time and space, and it will always be important to tell its story. So, here's a toast to our savior, beer. Three cheers, mate. Hey,